Hi, yeah. everyone. So uh, thank you very much, Dr. Hadilal. So um, first of all, thank you so much for everyone joining this webinar today. Um, it is such a challenging time in 2020, but we're able to get through this together and we are now together. So um, again, thank you to UBC and all the departments and organizations supporting this webinar, especially Hadilal, who invites us um, to, to give a talk about media. So we'll divide the presentation to um, three chunks. And finally, we are going to talk about um, the period uh, between 1997 to 2020. So the three chunks of period will be 1997 to 2000, then 2000 to 2010, and then 2010 to current. So um, are we going to just say hi first? Hi, <laughs> hi there. And meet. Yeah. Yes. Thank you so much. So are we going to uh, go through the video first? Or so I, th yeah. I think what we are presenting today is our experience of uh, what we saw from many commercial radio side of how we look at media and how the media interact with people. So we can start it now, I think. Yeah. So I will go I'm going to show you a, a video. But you have to share yeah, yeah, yeah. screen first. Yeah, share screen. Let's talk. Okay. How has media changed and developed in Hong Kong? We will share facts and experience from 1997 to 2020 from the perspective of professional broadcasters, especially from the angle of the commercial radio, as we both worked there for a long period of time. I have worked for many media companies, including the Commercial Radio Hong Kong, Radio and Television Hong Kong, aka RTHK, Hong Kong Cable TV, TVV, and now TV Hong Kong. At the most popular radio channel for younger generation, Commercial Radio 2, Tic Tac Gaolik Sang, the four roles I've been involved was DJ, I was a program host and anchor for seven days a week, including the weekly music chart shows. I was a producer for many programs, including my own daily two-hour music show and the longest six-hour show every weekend. The third road, as a music director, I'm responsible for interacting with record companies, representatives, auditioning new music, offering commentary, and making decisions on music policies. Fourth, being the content development strategist, I initiate and set goals for making new contents for the radio channels and other business partners, including record companies, concert organizers, and clients. I experienced how the power of media shaped the culture of the audience or Hong Kong people. Oftentimes, mass media and independent media shape consumption behavior, pop culture, and music culture. From 1997 to 2000, the period of tremendous growth of the internet helped shaping media as well. The World Wide Web had a revolutionary impact on commerce, culture, and media as well. While the technology change was accelerating, people began to invest money in building websites. 881903.com, formerly known as crhk.com.hk, the official website of commercial radio began to offer real audio live streaming service since 1995. It was very innovative back in the late 90s, as radio programs can be accessed through computers as long as you have an internet connection. Later on, crhk.com.hk offered archival content so that people from around the globe can listen to the radio program with a subscription fee. And you can still subscribe to it now. It is definitely one of the most crucial media platforms for all the Hong Kongers or Cantonese audience living overseas. Gao Ling San ID Club 903 ID Club was channel 903's Listeners Club where ID stands for I dream, I discover, I dare, and I decide. 
903 ID Club launched credit card for 903 listeners. The Manhattan ID credit cards included a MasterCard, a Visa card, and a Platinum Visa card from 1998 to 2015. This was a very unique platform in radio history in Hong Kong. During this period of time, the platform already had more than 300,000 card-carrying listeners. The interesting fact was that the audience could use the reward points they earned from the credit cards to get concert tickets and other special offers. 903 ID Club aims at promoting local music and it is a trendsetter for young audiences. Channel 903 launched a series of concerts called Music is Live Concerts, Live Food Yam Ngao Woi. These concert tickets could only be redeemed through the credit cards, reward points. Audience and credit card holders were able to get the ultimate song chart yearly award presentation tickets, Tiktak Ngok Tan Lau Ham Bong Ban Jang Di Nai, by using the reward points on the credit cards. This was the only way to experience the show. This is the major music awards ceremony of the year. The awards ceremony is held on January the 1st, New Year's Day, every year. The My Favorite Awards are determined by votes from the public. They use the one man, one vote model to determine the My Favorite Awards. At the same time, many different kinds of web radio launched in Hong Kong. Unlike A81903.com or other mass media companies, these web channels were operated without the support of mass media stations. They were independent companies. These were defined as new media. One of the examples of web radio is sambaiba.com, 3x8.com. Founded by one of the most popular DJs, Eric Cott, Gottman Fei from 903, Sunbaba.com aired live radio shows right from the studio with a new interior design. Unlike any other traditional radio studio with a web camera, audience could watch the radio show and interact with the hosts at the text-based chat room. Dennis Ho, Ho Wan Si, was working at this web radio station before she released her first album. In 1997 to 2002, Hong Kong Telecom launched interactive media service. Wu Dong Din Si, ITV, commercial radio work with this service and produce interactive watchable radio shows. The audience could interact with the program through a TV box connected to a broadband internet connection with a remote control. It was Hong Kong's first internet interactive TV service. The project was boosting the Navigator broadband internet service and facilitating audiences to watch the favorite radio programs by using a television set. Media, in this sense, has a diverse array of media technologies that reach a large audience. Media linked with technology or credit cards, pop culture, and our living styles. So, what is media? Is Napster a media? Napster in the 90s rocked the whole world and forced the music industry to develop digital distributions and streaming technology. Approximately 20 years ago, a US computer hacker had worked out a way to share music for free. It was the first time when recorded music was available online to everyone instantly. The consequence is huge, and of course, it leads to the decrease of CD sales and the music stores like HMV file bankruptcy again and again. Nowadays, Apple Music will learn your music preferences and feed your new tunes. Apart from the new technologies, in 1999, commercial radio lined up with Kowloon Motorbus and launched a new service. Radio programs from Channel 903 were broadcasting on the bus. That's way before the road show. Kowloon Motorbus owned media platform. And of course, the media programs on the bus would provide a highly effective multimedia advertising platform that pushes commercial products to reach the audience. After 2000, the speed of the internet, the mobile services, social media platforms all have changed the broadcasting industry. We'll talk about it later.
No. So, so basically, yeah, here you go. <laughs> so um, the sum of uh, the period between 1997 to um, 2000, and I have introduced my background, how about you? Oh, <laughs> because I'm not good at um, looking at the camera and shoot, so um, I didn't do that part. I, I, briefly, I can tell you a bit about what, what I did. I was the um, director of multimedia services at commercial radio, so I took care of all the digital and non-broadcasting audio uh, content, and I looked after the, the websites, like including um, 881903.com and other websites. So, um, yeah, be, before that, I was a creative, creative director at commercial, at commercial radio, and I all the visible elements of that station, including concerts, printed matters, design, and uh, videos, art directions, are uh, all, all, all <clears throat> or underneath, yeah. Um, so, for the period from the period of before ninety seven uh, ninety seven to two thousand, there are a few there are a few things I want to mention. First, um, commercial radio is a licensed radio station in Hong Kong, so there are only two licensed commercial radio stations in Hong Kong. So the uh, um, the content they provided um, should follow rules and regulations, unlike any other non licensed media. So this is very important as a, as a licensed video, uh, uh, radio station, a licensed media. So we assume that um, all the contents, including news and entertainment or music they provide uh, are legal or, or um, <laughs> legitimate. Yeah. So um, yeah, that, that's, that's the fir first video that we are showing. So I'm going to show you the second one. Let me, yeah, is there anything uh, between 1997 to um, 2000 that we can share uh, in terms of images? Or... No, I'll do that, that part later. Okay, so uh, before we go on, so um, I just want to check. So I uh, see many people uh, joining us today, and I would like to know if uh, any one of you have a chance to listen to 903. <laughs> <laughs> And um, so uh, I, I would like to know uh, like the demographic of um, the audience today, but uh, yeah. I think we can do a, I think we can do a show of hand, you know, if you click participant, uh, like can we do a show of hand, you know, just cl click yes. If you. Uh, yeah, if you ever listen to CR2903. <laughs> Okay, great, thank you. So how about um, RTHK? Yes. How about um, Metro Radio? Metro Radio, no. Yeah. <laughs> okay, how about um, TVB? Of course. Of course, yes. Okay, so uh, I just want to get um, the idea of uh, uh, what the audience are. So thank you so much. Yeah, so we are going to the next one. And um, so this is the period between 2000 and 10, 2010. Okay, share the screen. And mute mic. During the period of 2000 to 2010, technology often moves in an unexpected way from satellite cable to the on-demand model and the interact model and because of the rapid growth of the mobile phone technology, broadcasters must respond to the changes. Now.com.hk together with channels at Now TV deliver contents through broadband internet connection. You may enjoy the TV programs from the globe such as HBO, Disney channels, BBC, National Geographic, etc. and etc. For local content, media companies always work with their strategic partners to produce compelling content. The media power is so huge that it could shape your living habits. They could shape what we like, for example, what songs do you like, what kind of music is good to you. Media plays an important role in creating a person's sense of reality. For example, did you ever feel like you like some celebrities? The media representations link with our lifestyles and consumption patterns. People may think that they can be exposed to the media without being influenced by it. 
could we? However, when mass media co-organized events, concerts, drama, mobile phone applications, contests, festivals, or on the other hand, when the shopping malls, wine and beer companies, restaurants, karaoke, game companies, gas stations, sponsored events that are organized by media, audiences are definitely influenced by and exposed to media unconsciously. IDClub.com, which is the internet platform for 903 ID Club that we've talked about earlier, created a lifestyle with 903's listenership. It organized a one-of-a-kind concert with special themes and special singers and band lineups. The ID credit card allows you to earn points to watch concerts and festivals based on your spending habits. I remember that one of my projects was to create four music albums for 903idclub.com members. I invited musicians, singers, designers, to create four concept albums. 903 ID Club credit card holders could use their reward points to redeem these albums. It is one of the examples of how DJs, 903 listeners, 903 ID Club credit card members, Manhattan credit cards, musicians, designers link together in everyday social activities. Popular music in Hong Kong is known as Canto Pop. Some people call it K song. It refers to the songs which are very compatible to sing in a karaoke box. It is often very expressive, melodic, and with an easy to sing along pattern. Did you know that karaoke companies are one of the major sponsors of many concerts and events? To name a few series of concerts, they include New Way Music Live, New Way Karaoke, even form a record company later on. The more you listened to a song, the more you wanted to sing with it. The more you sing it, the more you would like to see the concerts. Since many of the events were collaborated with mass media, our preference of music could be influenced or shaped by the media. And that's how the media influence pop culture. That's the relationship between karaoke and radio stations. It also applies to the relationships between record companies and radio stations. They need each other badly. A record label needs radio airplay to deliver the music to the audience of radio listeners. A radio station, on the other hand, needs music programming to broadcast to that audience. 903 Music Chart and the Yearly Award are based on the airplay. So, if people hear a song often enough to get familiar with it, they might like and want to buy it and want to sing it out. When you play songs in the karaoke box, this type of video exposure can significantly increase the popularity of a recording artist. To get mass exposure for new songs, producing a great envy would help to promote the songs. You could see sponsors from different kinds of companies. The sponsorship serves as a directly or indirectly marketing strategy to arouse their brand awareness. There were many product placements in which branded products and services are featured in the MV and events as well. It is not surprising that Motorola and Nokia were the dominant sponsors of many projects and events back then. You could listen to the radio drama on radio stations and at the same time watch the radio drama on your mobile phone and other devices. You could listen to your favorite song on radio stations and at the same time download the ringtone on your mobile phone. You could download your favorite album covers as the wallpaper of your laptop or mobile phone as well. Mobile phone companies invested in events and concerts to reach their target audiences. Oftentimes, the promotion worked closely with traditional mass media. 
As you will notice that radio produces audio content, you cannot read it nor see it. That's why commercial radio often works with print media. Many anchors and DJs are also columnists for various magazines and newspapers. No wonder why so many DJs are multimedia artists or cross-media artists. Jen Lam, Lam Haifeng, is the first person who launched a podcast program at Apple iTunes in Hong Kong. The program is called Lam Haifeng Stand Up. He launched the program to promote his stand-up show. The project collaborated with various print media as well. Cross-media promotions usually involve using a variety of media forms to integrate the message into people's consciousness. While Nine Three puts on a new concert, the magazine will simultaneously promote a new line of T-shirts and toy figures featuring the concert. Media is so powerful that not only will it influence the pop culture, but also play an important role in. Politics. In 2003 to 2004, commercial radio dismissed the most popular program host Albert Jiang, Zhang Jinghan, and Raymond Wang, Wang Yongman. They are known for criticizing the government. Albert Jiang won him the nickname "Chief Executive Before 10 A.M." Subdim Chin Tak Sao. Both played a crucial role to arouse the audience to protest against national security reform, which is also known as Hong Kong Basic Law Article 23 in 2003. The organizers, Civil Human Rights Front, estimate that over 500,000 people took part in the demonstration. These two most popular current affairs commentators and radio hosts founded their own media companies after they left commercial radio. Their influences are phenomenal. Albert Jiang became a lawmaker at the Legislative Council, and in 2008, his company Wave Media received a license to run digital radio broadcast channels. The company was named DBC, and then he formed D100 Digital Radio Station Channel. D100 continues to be one of the most influential new media stations in Hong Kong. Raymond Wong also became a member of the Legislative Council. He founded one of the most popular internet radio stations, My Radio, in 2007. It also marked the beginning of the new media era in Hong Kong. So this is basically the period between 2001 and 2010, right? Yeah, I have some a few points that I can share. So in two, in about 2000 2001, commercial radio did a joint venture with、um, PCC Pacific Pacific Century Cyberworks and formed、uh, a company called PP, PCC Skyhorse. And at that time,、um, before PG, PCCW, they they formed this company that produced cultural products,、um, which is very uh, uh, <clears throat> which is very uh, um, unique. So that、um, the the products include shooting movies and doing internet oriented works and promotions. And working closely with the radio station, then the production company also focused on、um, uh, making talent and、uh, and also generating new commercial and、uh, entertainment products. Do you have any images?、Uh, I can show all the images at the very end. At the very end. Yeah. So now.、Um, <laughs> So we can go to part three. Yes, because we're going to、uh, show you some of the highlights、um, of each decade, and、uh, let's mute the mute the sound. The explosion of new media and social media channels has changed the media scene. While many of the popular media channels launched before 2010, the past 10 years marked a rapid growth of them. When someone asked, "What is the newest form of media?" What is that? It is going to be blogs, social media platforms, or streaming services.
Before we go into details, there have been many changes in the past 10 years. Karaoke scene declines. Ringtone services decline. The print media is declining as well. The number of bloggers drop, but there is a rise of key opinion leaders or influencers. There are various web radio, YouTubers, individual media, social media platforms, internet speed is faster, and newer mobile generations have appeared. When we are talking about new media, many of them are in fact coming from the old media. For example, online newspapers are also old media in the form of a traditional printed newspaper. Sometimes it becomes even more complicated to define media. YouTube is a social media platform. YouTube itself will not create content. Only YouTubers create content. It is a social media platform that lets everyone bring and create content to the channel. Same as Facebook. Facebook is a social media platform. It is not a media company. They don't write news. Although many people get the latest news from Facebook, Facebook shouldn't have any editorial judgment. But some people suggested that their algorithm will filter news. The user on Facebook could be a media. A group of people who created content on YouTube could be a media program. Every single one of you could be a media company. Each of you can broadcast your content through one or more social media platforms. You are able to post a live feed on Instagram. You can create your live broadcast on YouTube. Instead of a phone-in program, you can interact with your viewers. There are many new opportunities with advanced technology. Is traditional media still relevant in 2020? Despite the shift in the media landscape, traditional media still matters. However, the key word is change. With the new technology, it can offer opportunities to reach more people than ever before. Old and new media are not mutually exclusive. You may still have a hard copy of the newspaper and check the post online. You can still listen to the news when you're driving and watch the news on your devices. Audiences have more options in how news and music are consumed. A broadcaster can be a YouTuber, an influencer, and a key opinion leader. Stephen Chen, Chen Zi Wan, who is Sao Zhe Zilong, the chief advisor of commercial radio and also a program host of Joy Ting Long de Gatin Chafa, launched a YouTube channel of his own. The news commentary program on his YouTube channel is very similar to his own radio program but with different platforms. Both programs may reach different audiences. This is absolutely beneficial to both Stephen and the audience. I don't think it would happen in the past generations. As the content should be exclusively to the radio channel in the past. It is a great milestone to open up new opportunities for radio hosts. TV hosts and even singers and actors. Miriam Yang, Yang Qinhua, Leo Ku, Gu Gei, Ronald Zhang, Zheng Zhongge, Sandy Lam, Lam San San, Karen Mock, Mao Man Wei, Lawrence Zhang, Zhang Dan Sui, and So Si Wang, and many more artists have their own YouTube channels. Celebrities are currently producing their own content for the social site. Their fans used to buy concert tickets to listen to them, but now they are taking time to create videos that cover a range of topics from music to surprising side hobbies like cooking. Why are these famous faces getting into the world of frogging? Some people call them a celebrity influencer. The new trend reflects the nature of media. When someone has started a successful video campaign or channel or media model, many others would follow. When new breeds of social media influencers drive trends, others would follow. 
However, just look at all these sources of information, the new media, the new channels. More people have a voice now. You can easily access more knowledge and information now. It is also increasingly hard to tell what's real and what's fake. Popularity does not necessarily determine accuracy. It is now the best time to distinguish between professional and amateurs. Professional broadcasters are trained to provide professional expertise. With ethical guidelines and media responsibilities, traditional broadcasters should ensure that all the facts in your report or program are accurate. They would clearly distinguish between fact and opinion. That's why the role of traditional media is still important. There is certainly a competition between the internet and traditional media. However, it doesn't need to be mutually exclusive. As media is constantly changing and evolving, making content has no boundaries and is not limited to a scheduled time slot. As the power of media is tremendous, how does the traditional mass media maximize that power is utmost important? Andy Warhol once said that in the future, everyone will be famous for 15 minutes. What he didn't say was that everyone is the media. Hi, so um, we sum up uh, the three periods and uh, the most recent period, uh, we see the growth of many individual media and uh, this is quite a big thing about new media. And do you have anything to add on? Yeah. Looking back at, at, at the, <clears throat> from year to year 2000 and well, the past 10 years maybe, um, what <clears throat> Well, I think reflecting what uh, Hattie was looking at is uh, how the media works and with us in this and other. I, I, I think 903 I and mean, channel 2, CL, 2, CL2 is, 903 is very importantly uh, doing the job of maximizing the opportunity to interact with the audience and the clients and create new communities and like many other Hong Kong media. For example, they, they, they work with telephone, co telephone companies, they work with mobile companies, they work with brands to create unique, not only advertising, but uh, unique communities so that the, the product and the, the content itself, in including music and culture and trend and design, are all interacting with each other. The circles are crossing and then they created a new community, new community communities through existing communities. And then that's why the, the, the audience club have, has more than 300,000 followers and card carriers and they spend money and get tickets to see the concerts or the events or the exhibitions and stuff like that. So, um, which I think is very unique in Hong Kong, the way that uh, a radio station train people and educate people to, to grow with technology and the means of communication and the way of interaction in, I mean, the interact the interactivities are always renewing itself. So um, now I'm going to share some, some visuals with you, uh, which is like kind of like a quick pick from uh, what we, we, we talked about or maybe not. So um, here, I am share the screen again um, over here. You have to share the screen. Yes, yes, yes. So now, um, let me share the screen. Well, let's talk. Share. So, this is what I found from the web. This is from 19, 1997. This is what crhk.com, rhk looks like. They have the um, CR1, CR2. I, and new three ID club and a news department and then some activities in, in front. And at that period of time, they all they already doing the real audio streaming. Oh, this is 
actually this is a concert ticket. This is a project that uh, 903 works with Motorola and create a like a year whole uh, event. It's like a membership thing that people join these um, activities and go to see some special concert. For example, this one is actually this. This is two papers and two balloons. That the balloon itself is the ticket. Then the, when they get into the the venue, then we we yeah, you see a lot of balloons in in, in front of you. So we are creative people and we do things which is not normal. Mm -hmm. Like this is concert ticket. So there are many balloons in the concert hall. Yeah. And this are actually the tickets. Yeah, these are all the cultural products that pro produced it by 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 Xiao Two Nine Three. Like there are like um, books, uh, CDs. This is the CDs and um, radio drama to the real stage drama. Um, some um, they have some photos of these concerts. That, some that by products of the program. Yeah. And this is right. like a spread. This is from, from year 2001. And a books. Another photo. This is the, this is the, the like wholesome uh, project that work with Coca-Cola and um, they recruit members from the uh, um, audience to join this um, stage production, which is a drama. Um, so after the summer, then this DJ works with the audience and works with the singers to produce uh, like three or four, I forgot. Um, they show is a drama, and then they produce the CD as a commercial product at, at last. Oh, this is what Mini talked about the music project for um, um, <clears throat> the show. For the 903 ID Club, as well as my show, so um, I link up with many musicians and also designers, and we produced and created something interesting uh, that uh, we normally not going to see it um, in a music album because um, actually that one is a floaty and this one is a game that uh, when you listen to the music you can play the card game together the board game together and when you listen to the music you can go to the beach and enjoy the sun <laughs> and the ocean yeah so this is kind of uh, some innovative um, projects that uh, those um, now three DJs and other creators do. This is another project where we have a telecom company, the PCCW and, and Navigator and 903. So this is another watchable audio show, which is showing at, through the internet, through the PCCW platform. This is a pre-net from 2001. Um, they, well, at that period of time, they had, the, the stations are still doing surveys. And um, this is two full pages, uh, two page, uh, full page ad, uh, newspaper ad showing that uh, commercial radio was doing well from uh, CL1 to CL2 in, in, in that year. The, yeah, this is another. <coughs> CD product that Mini Mod mentioned. This is uh, actually this is a T-shirt and a CD for the ID Club members to redeem their points. And, and all the lyrics actually are printed at the back of the T-shirts. And this is designed by um, Janet. That is another strange, I mean, strange or interesting event that that 903 did. This is called Going San Yu Guan Sanlun, which is uh, like a three three day two nights rock show in the forest. So um, people go to buy the Levi's jeans or I, I don't know, I forgot how much they, they need to spend. And then they get the tickets to join this uh, three days uh, event that they, 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 they were actually camping over, over the venue. It's kind of like a Fuji Rock Festival or yeah. some Oh, this is another interesting uh, concept that, uh, that, that we did. I forgot this is in 2003 or 2004, I forgot. It's, it's, uh, somewhere in the world, there's they, they they, 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 going to be war. And then suddenly we, we thought about, I mean, the station thought about it. And then they, they worked together with now.com and PCCW to do a concert at Harbor City, uh, which is like promoting peace, 36 hour, live concert people can listen to the radio and see the streaming through now through the, the internet mm -hmm. but this this kind of thing is very unique in, in 903 yeah now nowadays i don't think it's ready yet 
yeah, during the pandemic, so many people do live and connect with all the people in yeah. the world to do it. But back in those days, it's quite new. Yeah, it, back in those days, 2003, it's, yeah, it's, it's, kind, it's hard to get it because of the bandwidth of the broadband service and everything is, is harder than now. So this is another uh, concept which is very unique and meaningful. After the death of Leslie Jiang, we did a concert for her. It's like a charity concert for her. For 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 Leslie Jones. So I I, I, be, I remember that um, this concert was actually uh, organized within a week or so. Or no 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 not, not this one. Very no. short it's period like, of time. No, like, yeah. like a couple months maybe. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Like, like <laughs> within a couple months after his death. Yes. Yeah. So. The ID Club thing, the club is not only a commercial, they also deal with like uh, more art. I mean, they, they have more art content than mm -hmm. make the, the other commercial products like they worked with the Hong Kong Film Festival. This is, this is another project that uh, 902 work with uh, PCW. It, they invite 10 DJs to shoot 10 music videos and promote 10 songs. So the, the 10 songs will, will be spread through the different, the, I mean, the, the PCCW channel and the, and the 903 channels. Mm -hmm. This is another example of like a radio stage, a radio show becomes a stage uh, performance. Like they, they spend the whole summer promoting and working on the rehearsal of these drama. So from a, a radio show, of course, in, involving like singers and artists to join. This is another interesting circle, I mean, membership-based project that runs for more than a year. Like, like 90C work with uh, Motorola, mo the mobile phone. So um, throughout that year, there are a lot of uh, events regarding the mobile phone and 903, the on-air shows and physical activities in involving, including um, exhibitions, I mean, creative exhibitions and um, creative concerts. Like many mentions about the California Gata Hong Sa Tien Fo Yama, which is like uh, 11 groups of artists work in a year, maybe less than a year time, and produce some specially designed uh, concert. These concerts, um, these 11 units are uh, newcomers or fresh, up and coming, yeah, up and -coming uh, artists. artists in Hong Kong at the period of time. So after after uh, Albert Jack, Zhang Kinghorn and Wong Yukman left, uh, Raymond Wong left CR, then this is the, the replacement of their, their, their shows. Like there are like three from morning to uh, afternoon to night shows, They're replacing the, the former two anchor shows. So they call it the Ching Chao Ching Nong Ye Start, which is still running now. Mm. Three, this is a, a, like a photo that we did after the, the press con. Um, another project, Xiao 2903 worked with three Hong Kong, Hutchison Hong Kong. So um, what, what the project is, it's they, uh, we invite the artists, I mean the musician. The, the, <laughs> sorry. Uh, my daughter's, my daughter's so crying. Sorry. Um, this project is, the, is when when three was launching their uh, generation, the third generation mobile service. Then they then at that period of time, they, you can make video call through your mobile phone. So we created like a new platform that hosts um, a radio, a mini radio show every single day. They then the audience can subscribe the plan and then use their 3G mobile phone to watch the radio show, and then we, we work with all record companies in Hong Kong and produce mini version of music videos every single week. So that if the new song comes to the station, we will, uh, the D one DJ will shoot a mini version of that music video and put it to the, the, the network. Then the, the users can use their 3G uh, mobile phone to watch that video. This is like bringing the old, I mean, the traditional music and radio um, experience to a 3G mobile phone. At the period of time, this is about 2004, like the 3G, the 3G period. 
So um, we worked with um, Choi Ha on her, his movie Ch Seven Swords Chat Game. What we did is we we write a radio drama based on the, the movie, and then we work with Free Hong Kong and create the uh, mobile site for this um, mini version of radio drama. So the audience can use their mobile phone to pre-screen the, the a story, the, the, this story, I mean, a, a mobile phone, a mini version of the whole story in the, mode of, in, in the mo mobile phone. And also there is a, mobile, a, a radio drama uh, airing um, in, in commercial radio. Oh, that, that is the, uh, it, it, this is actually um, uh, an autobus card. Uh, celebrating the ultimate song chart for 20 years. So um, the, the, the channel invited DJs and artists to, to design the, um, the card. And then um, this is like a charity thing too. They, they buy the charity by the tone of the radio station. Okay, stop. I share all these images because I want to illustrate how a, a media, a radio station, can diversify its, its strengths to different companies, different platforms, and different sectors of the society. So that uh, the, the force that is um, struggling around is, is strong. So when uh, you talk about the power of media. Yeah, it's not about- it that strong. Yeah, it, it, it's that strong that they interact to people in many different means and ways and activities, and even through products, so, so and subconsciously you 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 don't really realize that when you use the octopus card it's actually something uh from the media right yeah from the radio i mean uh with from from my experience from my experience working with different media companies in hong kong i mean commercial radio is the one this is so unique that this is so multi-faced that and so um active and interactive that it's not replaceable or I think I would say mm -hmm. it's like mm -hmm. the only one in Hong Kong that is doing something like that. Yeah, so uh, in the rise of the new media, we still see the old media existing in uh, this, um, you know, community or society because it is kind of a working hand in hand at, uh, at the same time. Right? Yeah, one, uh, 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 one, more, one, one, one more fact to, to share, which is quick and important. So in, in year 2008, um, YT, Yu Zhang from commercial radio start um, a new project called Sky High Creative Partners with uh, Hong Kong Jockey Club and uh, St. Mark's. <coughs> Man, no, no, no. Um, St. Mark's Central. No, no. Mm. It's called um, Sky High Creative Partners. Tin Bei Gou Chang Jok Bao They went to Tin Sui Wai and, and set up a company, which is not a company, which is like uh, like. Um, NGO kind of company that they involve um, um, the, the underprivileged people, I mean young people in Tin Sui Wai to, to join them and then and turn them into like a radio or creative person, which uh, in the past five, ten years, I don't know, no, maybe five, five years, there are many uh, artists trained by that institution. They become directors, they become um, photographers, designers, and stuff like that. So I think a radio station in this sense is, it's not like a radio station that you, you might thought of. Like here, you turn on the radio, like physical radio, you, you can imagine a radio like that is, is so powerful when people work, when people fully utilize the medium or the radio. Yeah, but what, like I said, everyone could be a media company. So um, it's kind of uh, different forces, right? Uh, at the same time, the old media and the new media, they sometimes work hand in hand, sometimes they're in competitions, but anyway, this is the reality that we're facing now. Yeah, again, react, yeah, uh, referencing, no, no, not referencing. So I hope this presentation will uh, give you some picture of uh, how we look at media and how, uh, media can change or live with you.
Yeah, so yeah, thank you so much. And we appreciate the opportunity to share some insight about the meeting in Hong Kong. And thank you so much for your participation. Thanks a lot, Minnie and Michael. This is a kind of truly informative. And so, uh, um, uh, well, like for me, because I work uh, primarily on late 18th century French culture, you know, like I deal with that kind of media all the time, even though I was sitting in the uh, reading room of the Bibliothèque Nationale de France. But the thing is like, we are trained to say, okay, what is the thing that is kind of in front of me? Is it state media? It, it, is it commercial media? Or you know what kind of media or what kind of information we are we, we, we I'm reading at that point, and so now you know I, I just want to kind of cut to the chase, and uh, uh, because you kind of walk us through basically half of your life, you know, like working in in in, in the commercial radio in Hong Kong and and see how you know like I am just kind of struck by the fact that it's really kind of om omniscient, like omnipresent. If you live in Hong Kong, then you basically just cannot avoid any of that. You know, like, you know, like we study musicology and just like, wow, like when you listen to a song, whether you like it or not for like 5,000 times, you know, like there's no way you can escape it. I first experienced that, you know, uh, 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 um, I first, at the first time, like Titanic, the, the film, do you remember that film, Kate yeah. Winslet? And so with the Celine Dion, oh my God, you know, I walked through Le Dun Do, okay, Nathan, you know, Nathan wrote, you hear the song like 20 times a day. Different stores play the same song, you know, because the radio plays that song. And so like by the end of the day, you just cannot help it. You sing the song, like just like this. So therefore, that is the classic way of what we now call silo, you know, brainwashing, okay? Because you have no control over the kind of information. You know, the song is fine, but it's not particularly outstanding. But the thing is, this is how the kind of media kind of shape your consciousness in the very real sense. And now, like, after, after I, you know, like, I, I watch you talk, and it's like, oh my goodness, it's so interactive in, in such a way that it's kind of very subtle. You know, can you not use the cell phone? Like, no, you have to use the cell phone, right? Can you not avoid the media in one way or another? And so now, you know, I'm, I'm living in Canada, so I, I, I'm kind of away from that for a long time. So I kind of, you know, have some mental space, but you guys are so close to this. So my first question for you is that, you know, like, um, do you really believe that to control the information in Hong Kong, especially now in year 2000, the first thing you have to do is to control the media, you know, especially you guys, you know, work with the producer, you know, like you kind of shape the content, even though you don't produce the content yourself, but you control what kind of content is admissible, which is not admissible. You create the content, you, you create programs. So do you really believe that by controlling the media, then you, you know, the state can completely control the way people think? You know, like, do you believe that this is a kind of over, you know, uh, an exaggeration, you know, which is no longer uh, a happening, this belong to kind of Cold War thing? Or do you really believe that, you know what, the power of media, they really can shape the way you, you, you think? And so, like, this is a kind of heavy question, so you can, you can decide what, what kind of things you can answer, but I just want to kind of toss it out as a kind of opening discussion. Yeah, I think um, from... From my point of view, I don't think commercial radio could be controlled by anyone. From my point of view, even RTHK cannot be controlled by anyone because they already have a, a structure, like a system there that, that governs the way that they work. Um, but um, yeah, I would say no, but um, will we'll some Will their, their freedom be, be um, taken away? Taken away, I, I don't know. Mm. In, 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 in different ways, like, like financially maybe, I don't know. Like, like Apple Daily, financially, that no, no one plays ad at Apple Daily. So um, that's why they're, they're changing. They, they are asking the, the, the end users to, to, to pay them so that they can still run freely, right? Mm. So, but, but uh, at this at this moment in time, I don't think anyone can 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 do anything to change the way that uh, say commercial radio do shows or, or do programs. But if there's um, you know how some kind of power that can over control some media, and could the media be actually influence 
Of course, others. yes, <laughs> yes. It's, uh, it if, could be, yeah, if but you... at the same time, because there are so many kind of various new medias, it's, you know, what, what I say, the Yapa or uh, any, any kind, any individual but, YouTuber. So we can still get the information from many different ways or many different platforms, right? But, uh, but, but the licensed radio station have to follow the, the, the licensing rules and regulations so mm -hmm. that they cannot tell, they can not, not tell lies and untrue news and things, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So I would but say- But that's a debate so, about uh, what uh, the, you know, big media company can control uh, some of the news, like Donald Trump. <laughs> Is he, is, is he the new president or not? Or um, who, who announced uh, the presidency, something like that. So um, it, I, I would say it could be, but uh, in reality, uh, it is hard to really control one media and you can you know, uh, get all the information that you need because uh, we are all um, interrelated and also all the media uh, themselves, they are uh, kind of um, monitored monitoring each other right so yeah you can sue them if they are trying, if they if they are spreading fake news yeah. interesting uh, any other questions michelle uh, can you ask your go ahead michelle yeah so it's like i grew up in hong kong and then like i grew up with the radio but then like as you know, like after so many years and with the rise of various like online media platforms so how do you think it has affected radio as being the most common way to like uh, to promote Cantonese music industry just so like like does it like make it better or just make it worse or like yeah what do you think it is always better with many different um, kind of medias and many different platforms that you can get your music so it is definitely better, but at the same time, uh, when we have so much information, when the information is overloaded, so we cannot choose the right music, even music, right? You cannot choose the right music, but actually what the roles of DJ or the roles of some really um, uh, mass media DJ, they can really uh, influence your choice by um, making the music sounds better because of the way they present the music. So sometimes, um, even though when we choose music or our music preference is indirectly influenced by some influencers, it could be some new media influencers or it could be uh, some celebrities DJ. Even with the, with, with the, um, the rise of digital um, platforms like Spotify or iTunes or whatever online platform, the the music un, the, the music industry the physical products sale the, the CD or physical products dropped, but then the the, the overall the music industry earned more money than before. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Music more than before. Yeah, <laughs> than before. And that's, that's that's, the yeah, the the musician earned more music than before because of now we we are having more radio stations than before. Yeah, and that's my understanding too because I noticed that musicians and singers they are not struggling they are learning they are earning a lot of money but the thing is the way we study these things have to change that's why i'm just like we need to talk to you guys and kind of show us how the media actually work you know you know like we used to to think naively that oh like the radio you do you produce a radio show and that is the end of the game but that, after i get to know you guys you know over the last few months no this is just a surface level you know yeah. like it like doing a radio show, it's just a radio show. But then after that show, it, it go back to the internet, it go back to, to Facebook, it goes back to Instagram, it go, goes back to some other new platforms like, uh, like I don't know, uh, um, like Patreon. Yeah, you know, there are always new ways to get your ideas out and got your creative products out and outreach people. So um, if the pre, if the if the artist or the creative person is is open up is open enough, uh, young enough, so that they I mean young and open to new products or new ways to to, to teach or to reach people, then it's always better than yesterday. So therefore, for that matter, that kind of general claim that oh the Hong Kong popular music industry is declining or is shrinking, no. that is actually false. No, no, right? That is incorrect, right? 
not I'm correct. Thinking you guys. <laughs> not right? Correct. Yeah, now we, are, we should celebrate that we have new ways to reaching people, your creative products, you know, uh, ways that you can never imagine before, like 10 years ago, you can reach your end user fast and precise enough so that they will spend money on your products. It's beneficial to new artists as well, because when you are a brand new artist, you can have more chance to actually um, uh, release, your, release your songs um, yeah, it's like the entry barrier to from your create from your creative room to end user is changing. You know, mm. you it's easier have... than before. You don't need to go to this like record companies or whatever. Yeah, companies that everyone agents. Can be a singer, yeah, and everyone can be a musician. Yeah, and, and so therefore, uh, and my final point is that you know, like for, for this section is that the way we think about music business need to be we need to be redefined, you know, like instead we need to talk about music and media business instead, you know, like rather than just kind of narrowly defining the music business is declining. I mean, you know, like what you guys say is just now is, you know, that's the, the entire monograph. But, uh, and so, but the thing is like the basic claim that, well, like, no, like Hong Kong popular music is not declining. That is a huge claim already. <laughs> so I, I'm going to kind of stop right now. And so like, uh, uh, any other question from our audience? Leo, well, why don't you go ahead and, and you, you ask your own question. Okay. Um, well, thank you, Minnie and Michael. Um, thank you very much for sharing. And, um, and of course, you're always welcome to join us as well. <laughs> we, we've been Zooming so much that everything, anything can happen on, on the Zoom platform, so everything is fine. Um, I'm going to ask a very annoying academic question, so, so, bear, so bear with me. So when we think about radios, right, when we think about radios um, or, or music, uh, or at least radio, we think about mass media, right, mass media. And, and when we think about, at least, you know, I'm going to date myself, I mean, the radio programs that I, I grew up with, right, Ting Chun Gao Heng Kok, right, mm -hmm. and, and, and Six and a Half Pairs, right, so those are yeah. 1980s. Uh, program. So if, as a historian, right, if we want to think about 1980s Hong Kong, and if we want to think about popular culture in 1980s Hong Kong, one way to do it is to, you know, think about these programs in commercial radio and, and RTHK, whatever. And then we can get a sense, I mean, it's not perfect, but then we can, we can make an argument that by tracing and, and studying these popular programs, um, then we can get a sense of sort of the state of popular culture in 1980s Hong Kong. I mean, not perfect, but we can use it as a, as a, as a reasonable uh, proxy. But with nowadays, with Chapman Toe is gonna to have a new app. So even YouTube is not good enough, right? He's gonna have a new app for his own programs. And, and many of these um, artists are going to have their own, either their own channel or their own particular area that they can connect with their fans. So we are now seeing sort of atomization, right? So many, many opportunities, many, many different platforms. So can we still now talk about mass media? And 20 years from now, if someone wants to study sort of popular culture in 2020, either Vancouver or Hong Kong, how are they going to study? I mean, how there's no, we can no longer just follow one particular radio program because we assume that it, it does represent a fairly sizable audience and therefore a, a, a sort of a great deal of influence. But we cannot follow every single artist and look at every single artist's fan base um, because that would be impossible. So, so first of all, I guess the question is whether or not we can still speak of mass media. Well, I think the, 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 the stations are gonna be there. They, I, I think first. So the the base the base could be the, the radio station like RTHK commercial radio. I think they, they will still be there. And um, I think there are even more there'll be more more ways to to um, broadcasting. I mean to, to broadcast content too. So I think the understanding of um, mass media is always the same. When, when you're talking about 80s or now. But then the vehicles that, that, that 
that we're talking about are different because uh, there used to be like two channels, now it's 200 channels. So I think th there are two, two points that, that can easily um, um, mark the importance of um, how we can record or the history, I mean, the facts through these uh, channels or platforms or ways of sharing. First is the content itself. Either it's a song or a piece of talking or a piece of writing or a piece of something. So this is the, the key element that is gonna be there. There's only one song and one, and then one hour speech or a piece of writing a book but there are the channels of, uh, of, of this content could be vehicle to people in many, 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 many ways. So we, go, we always go back to the creative, the, 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 the initial creator. Either it is a song or a CD or like an EP or like an LP, like 12 songs. So people can trace back only from the creator and the products, but not the vehicles. So I mean, I, I'm not sure if, I, if, 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 if I've answered your question well, but then because of um, the, the, the co collecting the, the data of these creative products, not the vehicles. So that mass media is changing, but it's still there. So yeah, that's how I think. What do you think? Yeah, well, yeah, go ahead. I think my understanding of Leo's question is this. And so traditionally, when we think about mass media, you know, we think about this kind of wall, like state media that control like everything, you know, like when you kind of follow this one program, for example, like Zhang Han, uh, 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 he had the program, a phone wallet, the type of something, right, you know, before it was cut. So therefore, you can really track the kind of, you know, the city culture, you know, in a very consistent way. You can kind of you know, trace this one program. And so therefore, for us who do research, I'm just like, okay, if we want to understand the Hong Kong history, say from like 2000, 2010 to 2015, I can just pick this one program and I can kind of follow the programs and then I can have a, the entire dissertation and I will be very accurately uh, 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 show that, okay, like this is one way to archive a history, to follow the memory of the history. But what you guys are saying is this, well, yes, this is the traditional way of understanding mass media. But, the, but because the nature of the mass media is constantly being fragmented, so therefore there's a numerous fragmentation of that kind of traditional mass. And now we are talking about numerous small communities, you know, like numerous, numerous, numerous small communities shaped by the media itself. So the traditional kind of mass media becomes kind of enormously fragmented. And so like in this kind of nebulous kind of world, a very fragmented media world, in what ways, like help us out a little bit, you know, because we need to do research. Yeah, yeah, I can we just need, to, need to do research. And so yeah. like, how did it get a very accurate sense of like, say a thermometer of understanding the culture in yeah. Hong Kong? You know, how did we trace that? Give us a methodology, you know, since yeah. we're the producer, you know, should we trace a particular app? Should we trace a particular media broadcaster? Should we trace a particular, you know, person or program? Like help us out a little bit. Yeah. this. That's why we need AI. <laughs> yeah, really, I am talking about AI. We are talking about beats and pieces everywhere, like all these hashtag of the, the roots of how a piece of content travel. So uh, we have it now. If you get a logarithm of a way to trap whatever data you want, we have it now. It, but then it's totally different from the 80s. We did not listen to, to RTK or CL2 to, to get, that, get that piece of correct information. It's, it's like, Piece in piece, and then you have to collect them with, with a way that, yeah, the way that way I don't know yet, but then I think the AI is the, the, the way that that can easily answer the question of how that that that, that the mass media, uh, uh, yeah. Maybe there's no one single media that can control or can um, be the you know the skeleton of what was happening during a certain period yeah, of time. Yeah, because the, 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 it's, it's like the end user experience is always changing. Mm -hmm. Like we don't have an LP anymore. We don't have an EP anymore because P the artists only produce single song. They have one song one year and then suddenly they, you know, it, it's, it's different. But then because of the user experience changes a lot. Yeah. 
so so that um, so, so one 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 comment you know one one of our students working on k-pop and and so a particular uh and so like for co korean pop uh pop song industry and so they're like uh, companies to keep track of those hashtags on twitter so therefore we have some accurate objective information of like, oh which group is the most popular in this quarter you know that group you know has become much more popular we kind of track the hashtag and by and, and use it as a kind of accurate measurement of the popularity mm -hmm. and to kind of try trace the kind of the mutation of, of, of the media scape. You know, like what are they talking about in relation to this particular group? Sometimes it's about the songs, sometimes it's about that kind of it, the image they project, sometimes it's about particular, you know, like a commercial product like Hyundai vehicles, you know, like electric cars, but sometimes it's really about kind of politics in, in you know, in, in K-pop culture, in relation to American uh, in the politics culture. So therefore, you know, like at least we have one way to kind of trace it. You know that that's kind of my my students' project, and and so like uh, and for you guys to to see that oh like no like in this kind of increasingly fragmented world that like, there are still ways to kind of keep track of that kind of what people are thinking you know the end users experience and their response to to major media so that we have to talk about that kind of mutuality you know like major media send this kind of message end users think this way by kind of treat it triggering their response on, on the media by using this kind of hashtag in a kind of media scape. But the traditional analysis of kind of, oh, like following the state media in the sense of what is printed on the commercial and uh, on the newspaper and what you hear from the radio program, according to you guys, is no longer enough because this is the one-sided information. To compensate for this, we need to kind of balance that with kind of information from user experience by tracing the hashtag and the, and the language in Instagram, social media, and Facebook, and Twitter. Is it what you're saying? By kind of tracing that kind of interactivity between the, you know, the user. Is it what you're saying? Yeah, I mean, not only in, in, the, in the creative side, yeah, and also on, on news, you know, um, take, a look, take a look at the protests in Hong Kong. Mm -hmm. um, these individual channels and people and small channels and yeah, they are all independently shooting that scene. So the fact is very three dimensional, not just one media, like 10 media is looking at that single scene. And that's how, how we, we look at how facts are distributed or, or communicate. Yeah. Okay. It's really harder to um, trace the history of um, yeah. a certain period than before because uh, no, because there's so so much variety to it. And but the, according to you guys, it's still traceable. You know, like that is the main point. You know, it's much harder, but it's traceable. This is no, fantastic. I know like uh, in, in PCCW, they have a music service called, called Move. They have a team of people daily tagging songs. Like they, they give hashtag to songs so that they have a yeah they have a library of all songs almost all songs are going to have an all songs so, library so that they have so, a tagging of everything yeah so in other words Hetty what that means is that you and I need to learn programming what do you mean programming <laughs> <laughs> it's better we, if you have we, a better program you saw we need all. to we need to learn python and whatever oh, I, computing I, language I, <laughs> I, I think no 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 i think no you don't need to learn learn that because i have to <laughs> i i'm not a programmer but I, I work a lot with these programming people the way we we have to do is to learn how to talk to them and learn how <laughs> to communicate that's, with them. that's probably easier yeah, yeah they, to talk to people i can do they understand what you need and then we don't need to learn coding because they are they are good at coding we don't need to learn but then the <laughs> way that we 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 with the help we can get what we want from them yeah and that's why we need collaboration and uh and so like uh, as a matter of fact you know i well, I, I know for a fact that you know like some of the uh, very interesting uh, people are here and so like samuel uh, do, do you want to ask your own question uh, let me introduce Samuel. Samuel is a PhD student in musicology at MIU. And so I, I, I got to know him, you know, a, a few years ago, you know, at the American Musicological Society. You know, he'd been tracing a, a lot of these things over the last few years. So Samuel, go ahead. Sure, hi. Um, so I was, I was wondering how much um, freedom you have, like as DJs, to decide like what music you play in your programs, because you know, you've uh, told us a lot about 
the different um, priorities that record companies and various like corporate sponsors have, right? Like they obviously have their own agendas and, and priorities. I was wondering like how much that affects you know, like your daily sort of um, like what music you decide to play, like whether they have more say than you actually, like you, you're just like sort of exercising what they want you to play given all of these sort of commercial considerations. I was the music director uh, of commercial radio, 903. So uh, one of my daily duties is actually to um, discuss with other DJs uh, what are our music policies like. So we have to leverage um, many different kind of, you know, uh, commercial values and also artistic values and also the preference um, of the DJs. So uh, we have a balance and because we are professional DJs, we know the balance and also we definitely have our own, you know, freedom to play whatever you want, but in the sense that we have the whole umbrella, the whole music policies that we have to follow. And this is um, oh, okay. mutually here. by um, every DJ. So, um, and then we have the, the whole picture of uh, what we're going to uh, promote or plug. We call it the plug song, right? Plug a song. And so that many people have that direction. And then you'll still have your room to choose your own favorite songs. Or um, for me, um, I'm not only playing Cantonese music and also I'm quite um, uh, uh, focused on international music. So this is my preference and they have the other DJs got their own preference as well. So still have room to do it, but uh, we are under a big umbrella or big music policy of each channel. And different radio stations have different music policies. It's like in the West, in, not in, in the States or in Canada, you can like a lot of different radio stations playing the same song, but some are playing different songs due to their own uh, music choices. Like CBC music? Like CBCs, definitely playing a lot more songs than any other commercial radios playing those play playlists, right? Yeah. So um, in, in that case, in Hong Kong too, you, you, you're listening to um, Metro, something. It's definitely not the same as going some or, or RTHK. They, mm -hmm. they, all of them, they have different way, uh, policies, of course. And then the clients have no say to any no music say. choice. No, 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 they, no, they, no they, they cannot, cannot buy music. Anything. No, no. no. <laughs> and yeah, I think this um, phenomenon is quite universal not only happening in Hong Kong, but also in Canada, in the US, or yeah. any other uh, metrop metropolitan cities. Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to uh, uh, um, introduce Winnie Lai. And so she's currently a PhD student at the University of Pennsylvania, you know, majoring in musicology. And so she just presented a, a really wonderful paper a, a few weeks ago, you know, at the, um, at the Musicological uh, Society. Uh, at annual conference, and, and I happen to be the chair. So Winnie, like, ask your own question. Hi. Hi, everyone here. Uh, I'm Winnie, and um, I'd like to ask, as there is kind of like Chinese influence nowadays in the city, and the influence or the impact, no matter its social or political impact, is getting more... Um, intensive. So what do you think about self-censorship or censorship uh, in radio stations and among DJs or singers in Hong Kong? Is there any influence from censorship? Censorship. I don't think, no, I would say no. In terms of like, uh, yeah, the commercial radio people still thinking, <laughs> you know, I would say no. Um, we cannot, we cannot say on behalf of other channels. <laughs> yeah, I would, yeah, I would say no, because um, still, the radio station uh, decide what music to play, what what can be played. Um, also, under under the the the, the licensing um, rules and, and regulations, regulations some songs nice. cannot be played because they they they're not allowed to. Other than that, I think the commercial radios have, have the total freedom of of um, what they play and no censorship. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, like, but, but the fact that uh, according to the regulations, you know, like, and you keep mentioning that there's this kind of legitimacy, you know, like, and so that that already 
like you know, they, depending on how you define self censorship, this is already a kind of you know you oh. put them out as a kind of you know certain song. You know that's for sure, right? You know, yeah. self censorship is no self censorship. I would say. But also, sometimes I think self censorship is more crucial than the censorship of. I mean, the, the regulation is because very... you're you're kind of conscious of what you have to do or not to do, mm -hmm. right? It's kind of like another another kind of uh, regulations, but you have to make sure that you 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 follow some of the rules. Yeah, I mean, I, I kept saying that it's <laughs> like, for example, you cannot say, you, you cannot play a Chou Hao song, right? Yes. Because you for be, example. You okay. <laughs> and so I, I noticed that this is, uh, um, this is 629, so I, I'm going to call, um, officially end this. But uh, and if you are interested in speaking to the speakers, and so please stay behind, and we have an informal session. And so, like Winnie, for example, like please uh, feel free to stay behind, and we can still chat for a little bit, and, and yeah, with, with the speakers. And